Welcome to BFC Live, the daily video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. BFC Live highlights the companies, brands, people, and trends driving the global cannabis sector. Learn more at businessofcannabis.ca. Our BFC Live conversation today is with Bernie Young, the SVP of Sales and Marketing at Afria. We wanted to connect with him about the differences between launching brands in the beverage, alcohol, and CPG sectors versus cannabis. Bernie Young, thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Jay. Uh, I want to start um, with uh, not so much with what you're doing now, but what you were doing before cannabis, because I think it lends itself to sort of, I, I would imagine how you approach the cannabis sector now. Talk a little bit about what you're doing before you came to the cannabis industry. Absolutely, Jay. So I've been in consumer packaged goods for just under 20 years now you know, always driven around consumer insights. And that's really been my passion throughout. I uh, worked in traditional consumer packaged goods with Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. So think of iconic brands like the famous Mott's Clamato Caesar here in Canada, uh, Canada Dry, Snapple, um, worked in Canada as well as internationally. But really the, the fun area was when I moved into beverage alcohol. I was a head of marketing for Brown Foreman, uh, great phenomenal brands like Jack Daniels, Finlandia Vodka, um, and really understanding the insights there. And it's funny when you think about just how alcohol has evolved. And when I had the opportunity to move into cannabis, and, I, and I've been in the industry since pre-legalization, I said to myself, well, how do I take some of these incredible best practices and move over into this space? And I absolutely love cannabis and it's been a thrill since then. And, and that's kind of how I've been here since I've been in the industry since probably about just under two and a half, three years now. Yeah. Which seems like probably 20, um, <laughs> given just sort of the pace of things and actually how things have evolved. But actually, it's actually that exact point you talked about is that when you're with those iconic brands that are not Beverly Beverly or beverage alcohol companies um, and brands, it's like you're basing it off of, I mean, at least a hundred years of sort of tracking insights, tracking what consumers want, understanding consumer demand, really having any data set that you'd like almost at your fingertips, right? Like, and mm -hmm. that's how you segment, that's how you market all those things. Then you come to cannabis where those things not only don't have a historical view, they may not even be available, you know, from day one to day 365, never mind two years in. So like, how does that affect how you sort of think about brand positioning and strategy? And like, how does, like, not that you're flying blind, certainly not now, but like, how do you develop sort of marry up? We are flying blind a little bit and we know a lot. Like, how do you sort of think about those things? Well, you know, it's funny, uh, Jack Daniels, and I don't know if you know that story, but really their whole platform and strategy is graduating consumers throughout each one of their generations of beverages and, and a lot of brands follow that and when you correlate that to cannabis really the way we've been able to build our brands is as we look at the positioning of each one of the products we we said to ourselves well ultimately what does the consumer looking for and each one of them really has a different positioning obviously there's the functional aspects of of price but to me you know you're going to hear us talk a lot about you know, the five senses and, and the importance of understanding the consumer. So if you think about what's important to them, whether it's the, you know, the visual appeal. So think of the trichomes on the flower or the aroma, the nose when you open the jar. And so when we think about just those basic kind of elements about a brand and how you really develop its value proposition, we really reinforce that in each one of our brand portfolios, whether it's Soleil on its moments, um, good supply on, you know, really converting the illicit consumer on that really specific strain that that's meaningful to them, or even Riff, um, which one we'll talk a little bit later on today on its connection around culture. So we, as we continue to look at that and, and really develop its positioning, our portfolio really kind of widens itself out with Broken Coast and, and really kind of building on that round portfolio in a breadth, which is really what we're after at Afria. Yeah. And then, and then, so those are like the starting position of like, here's what we think. And then it, I know some of that gets absolutely married up with data because we have a partnership with Headset and we've seen 
some of those brands do extremely well in their specific categories and their specific price points. And, um, and I actually want to talk about that because how do you, and maybe this is sort of the, the point is like, you, you take what your sort of best thinking is, you marry it up with sort of ongoing and, and real time sort of data and insights, and then you plan ahead or try to plan ahead. And so we're, we're sitting in 2021, we've been in legalization for some period of time, but you know, the last year has been really hard, certainly in retail or certainly in the biggest uh, market here in Ontario, where most of the stores were closed for part of the time. But now when things start to open up, there's just hundreds of more stores and more consumer choice. And we know that's where consumers wanna buy cannabis for sure. So how do you sort of factor all those things and look ahead to 2021 and sort of how it implies? And if you want to sort of take Riff as an example, like how do, how do you apply that all to what you're doing with Riff? Yeah, no, for sure. So I think all of those pieces are extremely important. Um, and really that consumer journey is how we think about it first. So for example, with Riff, you know, as we look at that brand, we've gonna have, we're going to have some incredible new offerings. So we're really focused on strains. So if you think about that brand as an example and its positioning, it's all about connecting consumers with collaboration and culture. You know, given the world we are in today, what I love about that brand and its authenticity is it really embraces individuality. Everyone is very different and that's okay. And we embrace that and we want to actually encourage artists and people to really share their, their uh, you know, opportunities of what they want to be and more importantly, their skills. Yeah, I want to talk a bit about because I, I just, first of all, I, I've loved the form factor since I think there was one on the shelf, which was like a multi-pack joint pack. Like, I just think it is so, it's, it's fun, it's easy, it's accessible. And now it's absolutely necessary. Like, I, I don't know, I, I even shudder to think about, it's like sharing a joint with someone, like, like literally sharing a joint. And we go back, we were at an event in late February last year, and there was like 400 people there. It was for some brand launch and people are passing joints. We're like, is this, should we be doing this? And it was like, that was the last hurrah, but maybe the last hurrah for the next, I don't know, five years. But it is interesting to sort of respond to both the timing, but also that's how people like to consume it. And the sharing part is very much part of cannabis, but you guys have, and others as well, but have figured out that this is a much easier format to share than like, you know, a big one gram joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and that's where we really look at the trends. And, and as you mentioned before, just how do we kind of connect and look forward into F21? You know, our brains are, are really focused around, you know, the understanding the legacy consumers and converting them over as well as, you know, ensuring that consumers are getting what they want. So like Jay, you see it and everyone else does. There's rotating sativas and, and indicas. We have that with our bingo um, super, super economy brand for that consumer as there, there are consumers there, but ultimately you're going to see our focus around strains and making sure that we're differentiating our brands on strains, you know, good supply being one of the top brands in Canada, as we all know, um, you know, similar with broken Coast and Jay, hopefully you've tried it already. One of my personal favorites on pipe dream and, uh, really just again, reinforcing, the importance of what consumers are looking for and really skating towards where the puck is going. That's what's really helped us grow our brains in the breadth again on, on our portfolio because really this one shot on, on one offering of going after a trend of low price, high THC, Yes, there's a, a consumer for that, but at the end of the day, as we build into a global CPG company, we need to make sure that we have our segmentation amongst our brands really thoughtfully positioned. And more importantly, it really casts a wider net. So when we think about our, our brands from a wider perspective, we're really categorizing it. And that's the same way when I worked with Dr. Pepper Snapple Group and with the Pepsi portfolio or at Jack Daniels. And if you think Jack Daniels, you know, classic old number seven, all the way up to Gentleman Jack and Single Barrel, again, a portfolio and a thoughtful way of understanding the consumer. But we do constant research with our bud tenders, uh, with our consumers. We need to validate what we're doing and make sure it's right. Because I'll be honest, Jay, we're not gonna get it all right. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not realistic, but what we need to do is test and learn and constantly ensure that we're refining our positioning, making sure that we can 
ultimately um, advise and, and, and drive a, a premium to our products because they're truly differentiated besides just potency and price. Yeah, no, it is, it's, it's great to talk to you and I, and I appreciate the time because I think it's helpful as the industry evolves, well, obviously taking learnings from other sectors and applying it here, but also filling gaps in the sector that is here and understanding consumers, understanding what blood tenders are talking about and how they're interpreting it, how, understanding how the huge ramp up of retail impacts or doesn't, and like, how do we find those consumers, bring them over, keep them here, and then take what you've learned here to a much broader portfolio or, or geography, really, as, as things grow. It's, it's an exciting time, so I appreciate the time. No, absolutely. It's it's definitely uh, very, very exciting. And I think kind of as we look forward, you know, this is the next phase of, of the industry as we continue to see it evolve. Everyone's getting very smart, you know, getting smarter, looking at more data. There are data trends with POS as we kind of look forward. And I think kind of the interesting piece will be as consumers start to refine their palates and, and really know what they want, there's going to be a, a convergence where, you know, they're going to start to have preferences. And, and at this point in time, you know, when I look at cannabis compared to, again, Dr. Pepper or Jack Daniels, they have a unique taste profile. Whereas if you think about our brands today and strains, there's thousands of strains. You're not going to just love one. You're going to love many. And when you start to be able to categorize and group them, again, in a strategic and thoughtful ma manner where it starts to build on the brand positioning on an emotional level where we can actually build brand affinity, that's the next level. And that's where you're going to see the Afria brands kind of move forward. And I believe based on our research and the feedback we continue to get from consumers and bud tenders, that's going to be our true differentiation to continue to win. Because as you know, Jay, it's extremely competitive amongst all the LPs, but at the same time, we need to stay focused and make sure we're driving our brains in uh, a long-term strategic fashion. That's going to make sure we win with consumers. Well, good on you and good luck. And we look forward to connecting with you down the road because this has been an insightful conversation. So Bernie, thanks for your time. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Jay. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us on B of C Live today. We're able to do what we do thanks to our ongoing partners, including Cannabis at Work, Cannabis Benchmarks, Can Delta, Headset, Gallagher, and Torque and Maine.